Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat and this session would look at previously used CPA questions by the AI CPA that were recently released. This is the real deal. Those are questions were actually tested on the exam, specifically on the FAR section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, tax and finance lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I covered, including CPA questions I do apologize I'm a little bit sick so my voice is not at its best on my website you will find additional resources such as notes PowerPoint slides additional true false multiple choice 2,000 plus CPA questions and hundreds of exercises that be considered quasi CPA simulation let's go ahead and take a look at the first question the first question reads Accrual accounting involves accruals and deferrals. Absolutely. Which of the following best describe accruals and deferrals? So this question tests your remembering and understanding per the AI CPA. What does that mean? It means this question, you just have to, re you should remember the answer. Okay. You should memorize what deferral and accrual, or if you don't, it's better that you understand it, but it's both. It's understand remembering and understanding. Questions such as remembering and understanding, they should take you less than 45 seconds to answer. Okay? And simply put, let me tell you something. If, if you're in my class and you're taking my intermediate accounting course and you failed this term, you don't know what accrual accounting is? Well, guess what? You're not ready to pass my course. On the CPA exam, you failed the term accrual accounting, which is an important concept. What is accrual accounting? I don't think you're going to pass your exam. The point that I'm trying to make is you have to know the basics 100% when you sit for the exam. So questions like this, those are easy peasy, like free, easy questions. So let's take a look at the first and see if we can answer those questions. A, accruals are concerned with expected future cash receipts and payments. Is this true? Yes. Remember, we have accrued revenues and we have accrued expenses those are the accrual accrued expenses and when we have accrued revenues and accrued expenses when we have accrued revenue we debit account receivable credit revenue and that deals with future cash receipts for the accrued expenses we debit uh, we debit an expense and we credit a payable well that that deals with cash payment so it seems accrual this fits the definition but you should you should know this before the exam so far so good while deferrals are concerned with past cash receipts and payment is this true yes we have two type of deferrals we have deferred expenses or prepaid expenses and we have deferred revenue or unearned revenue and yes both of those they deal with past cash receipt and payment prepaid expenses or deferred expenses you paid the money in the past so in the past you debited a prepaid and you credited cash and you created a deferred expense and for unearned revenue you debited cash and you credited unearned revenue so simply put a looks like a good good answer for me i will go with a now on the exam day when you read a you should know that what deferral and revenue is now if you have any get doubts about this topic go to my chapter three intermediate accounting course okay intermediate accounting and i go over accruals acc accrual accounting very much in detail okay but let's take a look at the other answers let's start from the bottom d it says both accrual and deferrals are concerned with past cash receipts and cash payment guess what if you answer c or d like both accrual and deferral are concerned with expected future cash flow you're saying there is no difference between the two immediately you should eliminate those two and if you select any of these answers good chance you are not going to pass the cpa exam because if you don't know what accrual is once again you're in trouble but what i'm trying to say is if you could eliminate c and b c and d you're down to 50 50. now here accrual are concerned with past cash receipts and payment no accrual accruals are concerned with future so this will be eliminated a is the answer okay Let's take a look at number two. It should not take you that long on the exam, obviously, but what I'm trying to kind of walk you through how you should be approaching each question. During the current year, Coley Company has an unrealized gain of 100,000 
on that investments classified as available for sale. Simply put, they have a bond, and that bond uh, has an unrealized gain of 100000 Cooley's corporate income tax rate is 25%. What amount of the gain should be included in net income and other comprehensive income and at year end okay and this question is application I would say this this question is most likely remembering and understanding in my book if you ask me so simply put if you know it's a debt investment it really should be the one that investment it's a bond it's available for sale guess what it goes into OCI OCI now we have 100,000 of it we're gonna pay 25% in taxes what we're left with is 75000 So if I know it's going to go into OCI, okay, immediately that investment available for sale goes into OCI, I eliminate this and this. So I'm left with those two, 75 and 75. So A is out, B is out. Now between C and D, what should I put? Well, guess what? OCI is reported net of tax. Simply put, the tax is reported. It's net of tax. Therefore, the whole thing goes into OCI. So it's 75000 in OCI. Again, in my book, you get a question like this. This is considered an easy, although it's an application question, it's still an easy question. You have to remember that investments, and they told you it's available for sale. Available for sale, that investments, OCI. We're done with this. <clears throat> During the year, V Company purchased uh, 200 of its ATRA bonds at par value and 50,000 of U.S. Treasury bills. V classified the bonds as available for sale. So we have bonds, and the bonds are AFS, and the treasury bills, this, those are the 200,000, and the, sorry, and the treasury bills are 50,000, and they are cash equivalent, okay? And V statement of cash flow, what amount should be reported as net cash used in investing activity? So do you understand the statement of cash flow and do you understand what investing activity is this is cash flow is very important statement of cash flow well let's start with zero so for simply put before we start with zero if we're talking bonds bonds is an investing activity so definitely the 200,000 will be included treasury bill treasury bill here they are considered cash equivalent cash equivalent is not investments cash equivalent will be counted with cash so it's, it's it's included with cash. Therefore, ca the 50,000 cannot be included. Therefore, it cannot be 250 because I'm not adding the 200 plus the 250. So it cannot be D. The bond is available for sale. That's a form of investment. A is out. And I'm not going to, there's no reason to subtract the two. There are two different investments. So B is out. So I'm left with C. C is, it's an investing activity. Bond when you buy bonds of other companies, it's an investing activities. Now, this topic is important. It's in my intermediate accounting course, chapter five, as well as chapter 23. So I have the statement of cash flow heavily, heavily covered in my courses because there, it's very important on the CPA exam. And this is an application, I would say, this is also should be an easy question, easy question. Another application question. Ace company issued 1,000 shares of its $10 par value common stock for $15 per share in cash. Okay? How should this transaction be reported in the statement of cash flow? So again, we are back to the statement of cash flow. So when the company issues stocks of its own company, so the company sold stocks and they received cash, they received cash, what type of activity is this? Well, you need to know this is a financing activity. The company is selling their own stock. They issued 1,000 of its own stock. It's a financing activity. And it's an outflow or inflow. It's an inflow. So it's an inflow of financing. Let's look. 15,000 cash inflow from financing. That's the answer. If you don't have time, move on. Okay? Again, this a question like this, 30 seconds in my book. You read the question. It should not take you more than 30 seconds to find the answer. Issuing your own stock is a financing activity. You don't answer this question correctly on the exam. There's a good chance you will not pass because think about it. The AICPA, they don't want somebody who does not know that issuing your own stock is a financing activity. That's my point. Let's look at C. C looks tempting. 15,000 cash flow from investing activity. This is when you sell stocks of other companies when you sell stock of other companies when you sell stocks of other companies 
uh, when you sell stocks of other companies, then it's an investing activity, but not, not, not in this situation. Okay, you're selling your own stocks. Ace company selling Ace company stocks. B and C cannot be the answer because they separate the ten thousand and the five thousand. Okay. <coughs> Let's take a look at this question. It's remembering and understanding. It means you should be able to answer it very quickly. S company has a payable to its parent. Okay, so we have a sub and we have a parent and S company has a payable dash parent. You should not be writing those. Uh, you should not be writing those, but in your mind, you, you just want, I want you to understand that you have a payable to the parent. Um, and which of the following balance sheet should this payable be reported? So if they have a payable, the parent will have a receivable. Okay, receivable sub. The payable will have a receivable sub. Let me kind of write this down. So the sub, simply put, the sub will have a payable dash parent. And the parent will have a receivable dash sub will have receivable from the sub so they're asking for the payable where would the payable appear would it appear on the strouts balance sheet would it appear on subs balance sheet of course it does because they have a payable and will appear so c and d immediately out okay we're left with a and b you're down to 50 50. planes consolidated balance sheet consolidated what so when we consolidated the sub with the parent when we consolidated those two they're going to give us a third financial statement the consolidated would this payable appear on the consolidated and the answer is no it doesn't because what happened we are going to cancel we're going to do we're going to uh we're going to credit the receivable and debit the payable when we consolidate the payable is gone the receivable is gone none of it will appear on the consolidated therefore the answer is no and the answer is b as in boy in the next session, we would look at additional previously used CPA questions. As always, I would like to remind you to go to my website, check it out. And if you're interested, subscribe. It's an additional tool. It's an additional resource. If you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard, stay motivated. And I'm always here to help you if you need any help. Good luck.